on to the United States now. Donald Trump is still blocking the transfer of power. Joe Biden and his team, meanwhile, have sprung into action. On Monday, the president-elect addressed two of America's biggest issues, the economy and the COVID-19 outbreak. He also talked about the vaccine breakthrough. Moderna's jab is showing a lot of promise. It offers 94.5% protection from the virus, which means it is time for the administration to think about distribution, how the doses will actually reach the people across the country. This process is likely to take months. Donald Trump has less than 70 days left in office. In all likelihood, the Biden administration will have to carry out most of the distribution. But here's the problem. Donald Trump is not sharing his distribution plan, which means the U.S. could be headed for a logistical nightmare, something that Joe Biden feels could lead to more people losing their lives. Listen in. More people may die if we don't coordinate. Look, as my chief of staff, Ron Klain, would say, who handled Ebola, a vaccine is important. It's of little use until you're vaccinated. So how do we get the vaccine? How do we get over 300 million Americans vaccinated? What's the game plan? It's a huge, huge, huge undertaking. Joe Biden also talked tough on the economy. He convened a meeting with America's top CEOs. Microsoft's Satya Nadella and General Motors' Mary Barra were in attendance. The president-elect's plan focuses on two broad aspects, supporting small businesses and overhauling the tax structure. He wants the wealthiest Americans to pitch in with more, something that he spoke about on the campaign trail. You know, it's based on a simple premise. It's time to reward work not just wealth in America. We're going to have a fair tax structure that makes sure the wealthiest among us and corporations pay their fair share. When we build back better, we'll do so with higher wages, including a $15 minimum wage nationwide, better benefits, stronger co collective bargaining rights that you can raise a family on. So that is Joe Biden's message, equitable and fair growth. He claims corporate America is on board for this plan, which is a bit tough to believe, since these companies have been evading taxes for years. Plus, getting some of these reforms past a Republican Senate does not look easy. Joe Biden has his task cut out, but to get started, he needs Donald Trump to concede. Donald Trump's position has not changed in the last 24 hours. He still believes the election was rigged and that he won. But what about his subordinates? Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has made his stance clear. He says he is preparing for a second Donald Trump term. In fact, Mike Pompeo is currently on a seven-nation tour. He started off in France. He is now in Turkey. He is also slated to visit the UAE, Saudi Arabia, Qatar and Israel. It's a rather strange tour to say the least because most of these countries have already congratulated Joe Biden. They have recognized him as the next president of the United States. But Mike Pompeo does not seem bothered. National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien is a bit more circumspect. He admitted that Biden and Harris are likely to occupy the White House come next year. Well, I'll, uh, still in office, so I'll probably hold off on the op-eds for a while. And I want to give, <laughs> if, there is, if there is a new administration, like they deserve some time to, to come in and implement their policies. We may have policy disagreements, but uh, look, if, if the Biden-Harris uh, uh, ticket is determined to be the winner, and, and it's, you know, obviously things look that way now, uh, we'll have a very professional transition from the National Security Council. There's no question about it. Before election night, American political pundits had one major concern. If Donald Trump were to lose, how would he govern until the 20th of January? Would he embark on a careless path? Early indications are these worries are legitimate. Donald Trump seems to be proving the pundits right. He is accelerating troop withdrawal from Iraq and Afghanistan. He wants the troops back home by the 15th of January, just five days before the inauguration. It is, on, it is an audacious goal. Even Trump's ally, Mitch McConnell, does not approve. He feels America is ceding space to terrorist elements in the region. Another report claims Donald Trump was considering attacking Iran last week. 
He asked his military experts for options. The target was Iran's main nuclear site. His advisors ultimately managed to dissuade Donald Trump from starting a war. Presidential transitions have always been a prickly affair, but never unceremonious. In recent years, there has been a tradition of the outgoing president leaving letters for the incoming leader. Far from letters, Donald Trump is intent on leaving a mess. A mess which Joe Biden will have to clean up.